welcome my name is savannah and welcome or welcome back to my channel um things are a little different today I'm not sitting i am actually standing for this video today because we're going to talk about plans for 2023 which aren't really plans i'm trying not to make them plans um more of just suggestions on what i should probably knit in this coming year um <clears throat> I still have a lot of whips uh left over that I would like to get finished as well but you know there are days when you want to start something new and I have a list of things that I want to start um <clears throat> so I figured I would share those with you just in case um when I will start any of these not sure probably not until I have um <clears throat> A current sweater that I'm working on, um, that one w is going to get finished first. I have my skirt that I'm working on. I don't know if I'll wait till that's done before starting something else, but <clears throat> excuse me. These are my ideas for this coming year. Um, I try to keep it on the, on the lower end of ideas. I think I wrote 12 items. Yes, 12 items. That's not going to be it. I'm going to also throw in couple hats obviously socks um but my whole goal is to work through this stash that I have and um <clears throat> try to get a lot of this yarn out um that would be definitely a large goal mostly want to get rid of things that oh, I purchased specifically for projects so um yeah also it, I can't see what I'm showing you so <laughs> let's hope this video goes well I did order like a clip-on mirror so that I can clip it onto my tripod and be able to kind of see what the screen sees that's just not here yet that probably won't be here for a while but anything to help right better quality I know my rear facing camera is way better than my front facing camera on my iPhone so anyways let's go ahead and get into it I'm going to be moving around a lot, pulling yarn off the shelves as I talk about projects. I will be inserting photos of each item that I talk about because A, I don't want to print everything off and B, just easier to do it post, you know, while editing. So I wrote down, so earlier this year, I wrote down a whole bunch of, say, I don't know if you can see this. I wrote down a whole bunch of things for like make nine ideas, like a whole bunch of sweaters. And while um, I had good intentions, there's a few of them on here that I don't plan to start or I don't have yarn. I don't have yarn to start. So I went through this, kind of wrote down some ones that I do have yarn and I have been thinking about lately. So <clears throat> I did that here, messy. The first sweater <clears throat> that I have on my list that I've been really dying to start for a long time now is the Rose Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. This is a cable cardigan. I think you start on the sleeve and it's worked this way across instead of, you know, bottom up or top down. I think it's knit side to side. Quite possibly joined in the middle. You might have to do both sleeves. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I did notice though on Aspostrico's Instagram the other day, they actually hacked the pattern, the rose cardigan, um, to make it uh, a pullover. They actually, I believe it was mattress stitched up the front because there is fit issues with this cardigan. Supposedly it likes to slip off of shoulders a lot. So I saved that post in case this is something I'm going to need in the future. Um, it looks beautiful. So yes. Um, all right. So I have yarn for this. I actually have two different <laughs> colorways for this sweater. Um, because I was unsure what I was going to do. So my first, let's see here. I think this is everything. Erin and Sage Blue. Okay, so my first thought to do the Rose Cardigan by Andrea Mowry was to do it in this colorway. I hope you can see this. I hope it's all in frame. Um, it would have actually been like this, lightest to darkest. 
Yes, so the sleeves, the cuffs would have started here and then to the body. Um, I bought all this. This is Holskarn. Holskarn. Um, it's super soft. Um, I have the color Willow. This one is Spring, Blue Sage, and Heron. So I picked these four colors for it. Um, I, because I... I can't remember when I purchased this, if it was la early last year or the year before. I cannot remember, but I know that I, oh, it was the year before. So I believe it was 2020 when I purchased this yarn. Um, when I purchased this, I didn't, it didn't dawn on me that I actually have a lot of green yarn for cardigans. So, so I was like, well, I don't want another green cardigan. So I kind of put that to the side, you know, and just didn't cast on the sweater. So... I changed my mind and ordered more yarn earlier this year, 2022, and I purchased pink yarn. Let's see, I only need one of each color, right? Candy gloss. Da, da, da. So I have these, wait, those are the same. Okay, sorry. So I have these, oops, sorry. I have these three colors. I also have a cone of Ecru and a cone of a color called Sweet Pea, which is like, it's more of a pinky purple. So I don't know if it'll fit with this, but if I'm lucky, I can just fade these three into the Ecru. And so this would be the cuff all the way. And then the Ecru would be the body of it. I think that'll work really well together, but I've ordered pinks because I actually have no pink. Oh, well, I have a pink slip over. It's that pinky purple color, but, um, I have no pink sweaters and I want to knit something pink. So I'm going to do the rose cardigan in pink, which I think her, hers is a pink as well. Um, but yeah, I have, it's again, whole scarn, super soft. Um, it's 100% wool. This is their fingering weight, but it plumps up a little bit uh, once washed. So I'm hoping all will go well with Gage because I believe hers is in sport weight. So we're going to hope for the best. Um, but I have Candy Floss. Allium, I think that's how it's pronounced. And Peony. Really pretty colors. Um, so yeah. I also thought about holding like a mohair throughout, but I'm not sure what because I'd want one color mohair throughout the entire thing, if if needed for gauge. But I'm not sure. But I want to show you. So I do have plans. I just need to swatch. I did swatch a long time ago with the green. I think I should just swatch again now um, before I start. But this one, I want to say, is going to be the newest new start. Like, the first new start of 2023 will be this. Because I've wanted to knit it for so long. I'm just a little scared about the pattern because uh, it's written quite... Uh, there's a lot to it. But, again, I hope I am in this. <laughs> Alright, next one is the Felix Cardigan. The Felix Cardigan is by Amy Christoffers. I knit the Felix pullover two years ago using Let Lopey. I used Let Lopey. Um, I like it. I just want the cardigan version too. So I picked. I bought a whole stack of yarn from. What is this? Sorry. Knit Picks. I bought all this yarn from Knit Picks. It is the Wool of the Andes Tweed in the worsted weight, and this is the Down Heather colorway. This is 80% Peruvian Highland Wool, 20% Dongle Tweed. Um, I thought this would make a really nice cardigan. Um, so I did buy, so I don't know what the yardage is. Let's see here. Okay, so this is pretty compatible. Uh, 50 grams, 50 grams. This is 100 meters. This one is... You know what, it doesn't have meterage on it, but then it says 109 yards. This is 110 yards. So it's pretty compatible. So I bought 10 skeins of this to make the Felix pullover, and I followed the instructions, I think, exactly. And I have one, two, three, four, four and like a half left of these. So I think 
with the Felix cardigan. I bought 10 skeins of this. I am going to lengthen it in body and probably sleeps just a little bit longer than the Felix pullover. So yeah, uh, that's something else that I want to make. The Felix pullover knit up really, really fast. So I'm hoping for the same with the cardigan, but I doubt it because you're going to be knitting and purling. So it probably won't actually go as fast as I think, but who knows? I think it's knit on larger gauge needles as well. I can't remember, but I have a whole set of yarn. I'm going to just reorganize this after the fact. All right, number three. Number three is the... I don't know how to pronounce it. I am sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. It is a sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Um, it was... I think it was this time last year that it was released. I could be wrong. I'm usually wrong. <laughs> but it could have been last year this time where it was released. And um, you could buy kits for the yarn through Moondrake Yarn. And I really, really, really liked it. But I wanted different colors. I wanted a purple sweater. Like, no, I was leaning more towards burgundy. Like, I want a burgundy sweater as well. <laughs> have not knit a burgundy sweater yet. Um, even though I have wanted one for a whole year now, probably. Um, so I ordered my own colors as a kit for this sweater. Um, and this is... I don't know if you can see it very well. Hopefully, I have not taken any of this out of the package. So this is all by Moondrake. Um... Let me see here. So the color I ordered, it did look more burgundy on the website, but it is more purple, and that's okay. It's called Mahogany. This purple, the main color is Mahogany. Then I have Stormy Beach and Blue Slate. So, yeah. I hope you can see this. This yarn is Corydale DK, 100% non-superwash Corydale. So, I have a kit. I need to knit it. So that's a project that is going to be started in 2023 as well. Again, I really hope you can see these. I know the glare is probably atrocious. Um, when I'm editing, if we can't, then I'll take it all out and take a picture. We'll see. But yeah, this one. Next is Boltain. 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 Fountain. Boltain. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. It's by Caitlin Hunter, another Caitlin Hunter uh, pattern. Um, I've had yarn and stash for this as well. Um, let's see here. I bought this all from Knit Picks. I really do like the colors that she has for hers. I believe it's the blue and uh, maybe something different. I decided to purchase something similar off of Knit Picks, and it is the Caparetta. I believe that's how it's pronounced, fingering weight. This is a 80% superwash fine merino wool 10% cashmere and 10% nylon so what's this what what do they call them um mcn an mcn is really soft really nice um so i got the why is every word got to be so difficult let's see if i can bring it in i don't know if you can see that this color and tansy heather <laughs> so i bought these two but I know in her pattern, she actually, for the color work, she holds two strands of mohair together. So I was looking through my stash. I probably don't, oops, probably don't have enough. But I was wondering if I should hold, let's see, this is all I have left. This is from Aves, Aves Fiber Work. It's the American Robin colorway. I have 12 grams of this left. I could hold it double with this maybe because I won't I don't think I'll have enough to hold this double by itself but that's an idea I have the only other color I have is this yellow but I think that's too yellow for me for you know what I'm going for I do like this color better if anything you know what I could actually just dye something similar I have full skeins of mohair. I could just die. But for the time being, this is what I have. Um, so, yeah. 
I do want to get this started too because it's been in stash for quite some time. Quite some time. That's the problem is that I have these sweater quantities of yarn that have been sitting here forever and it's starting to really kind of annoy me. <laughs> so. All right, next is Birds of a Feather. I purchased this kit Mother's Day weekend at Longmont Yarn Shop in Longmont, Colorado. They have this kit sitting there, it's Birds of a Feather. Um, I actually already had the pattern in stash, so I was like, let's just buy the kit, let's do it. So it came with um, this yarn, two skeins of this Hedgehog Fiber Skinny Singles in the Dune colorway. I have never knit with Hedgehog Fiber, so I think that's why I decided I wanted to get this kit. Um, plus it's really pretty. I love it. So Dune, and then it came with another yarn. Sorry. Sorry, another yarn I've never used before, but Rowan. Um, this is the Kid Silk Haze color. That's what it's called. What is the color name? I don't know if, oh, um, it says SH and then 00002, lot 333. I don't see a color name at all on this, so maybe they're not named. It's just a color number. But yeah, I've never knit with this either. Um, it's just a 70% mohair, 30% silk, so I doubt it's different than anything else. But it's nice to be like, hey, I've used Rowan Silk before, or Kid Silk Haze, whatever. It's really pretty, so these two together for the Birds of the Feather shawl. And that's by Andrew Mowry, if I did not mention that. A lot of people knit this shawl, and they say they love it. So this is something I'd like to get done, or at least started. Getting it done in the same year is, that's asking for a lot, probably. All right, next on my list is, oh, where's the yarn? Oh, goodness. Okay, so this one's called Monstera. I found this one on Ravelry a while ago. I bought yarn for it. Um, I am a little nervous to start this one because, um... There's only three other people who've tried knitting it, and they said that it was really small on them. So I might have to knit definitely a larger size um, and then play it by ear. It is a bottom-up sweater, so we're going to see. But I have yarn for it, so we're going to attempt it. But let me see if I can grab some of it out. So these are the colors that I picked. Again, it's from Knit Picks. I bought this a while back. It's the Palette Yarn, which is their fingering weight, 100% um, Peruvian Highland Wool. I've used this yarn before in a different sweater, and I actually really, really love wearing that sweater. It's really comfortable, really comfortable. So I was like, I, you can't go wrong with Palette Yarn. It's a beautiful, I think it's two-ply, yeah, it's two-ply. Again, it's 100% Highland Wool, so it's rustic but without the itch factor it's really really soft so i got these three colors um i want to do something a little bit different than what the photo showed so my main colors actually this one which is called bittersweet heather it's this deep dark brown and then i can't remember which one was going to be the exterior like the outline of the leaf i think it's this one which is lart <sighs> larch I think that's larch heather. So the screen and then the interior of the monster leaf would be caper. So I think this needs to get cast on. I I have to really see I hesitate making this video only because me the way I knit, I'm kind of a tighter knitter, so I struggle a lot with gauge. So if a yarn doesn't work like if I can't hit gauge or get close enough to gauge where I'm comfortable knitting, then that whole project has to be scrapped. So it's like, take this whole video with a grain of salt if I'm going to cast on these projects or not, because, or, you know, even get them started. Because if I can't hit gauge, I won't know what to do with the art. <laughs> That's my only problem. So let's see if I can get it back mostly up here. So yeah, Monstera. I thought it was a beautiful sweater. 
Um, I do love monsteras. I have two giant ones here in the house. Sometimes it's probably buried under the other yarn. <laughs> but anyways, so yes, monstera. Oh, I didn't say who that was by. Um, Chantelle Laplante, I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. So yeah, that's an idea. These are not going to be started in the order that I am giving them to you. They're just what I wrote down. Uh, next I have Abbey Road. Abbey Road sweater by Beverly Dot. This one I found on Knit Picks website. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. You know what? It was in one of their little magazines. I get their little catalogs. Well, I don't have any saved. Um, I get their catalogs often from Knit Picks. And this sweater was featured in one of them in 2020, 2021. Either way, it's been a while, <laughs> over a year. Um, and it's beautiful. It's an all over colorwork sweater and I really love the colors. So I went ahead and ordered the whole set. So here I have them all in this little Ikea bag. Perfect little project bag, right? It is all palette yarn again. That's what this sweater called for. Um, definitely crazy. I think this is a bottom up sweater. Um, it looks cropped, but I'll just have to deal with that. Wear it over a high waisted skirt or pants or a dress. Okay, I'm gonna drop all these. So yeah, I just got all the colors that are in that sweater because I thought it was gorgeous. We have Calypso Heather. We have Hyacinth and indigo heather so again a palette yarn so it's 100 percent peruvian highland wool they're fingering weight um what else do we have here we have clarity this is the color that i used in my first sweater so i know it's a good one penny royal it's really pretty dusty purple uh, let's see here what is this one we got mulberry and the last one is midnight heather so like a deep dark blue. It looks almost black, but there is definitely some tealy blue uh, heathered in it. So yeah, let's see if I can. I sure can't, but this I'd like to get cast on. It's a, like I said, all over color work sweaters, so that's going to be a bit crazy, but fun times. I will definitely just be using this probably. Yeah, uh, okay. The Zip Sweater by Sana Scarn. I put this one on there because I really do want to knit it. I just don't know what yarn I'm going to use yet. I am debating on just... Um, so I have this Drops Kid Silk in the black color, and I have a cone of black whole Scarn Super Soft. So I'm thinking maybe just doing a black one. I initially really wanted to use this yarn um this is life in the long grass this is the cactus moon soil in their zebra sock base which is oh, excuse me 100 percent superwash highland merino i can't hit gauge with this and i don't want to pair it with a mohair because the coloring is just so beautiful here's a here's a twisted up skein so I have a sweater's quantity of this yarn. I'm just unsure what I'm going to make with it. But I had hoped to make the zippers, the zip sweater by Sana Scarn. But nope. So I'm thinking just, just a black one maybe. Using this and Holst Super Soft. I just have to gauge swatch it. So that's an idea. <laughs> um... But I really want to make it, even though I don't have exact yarn for it yet. Um, Wonderlust shawl. This was on my Make 9 from last year. Did not get around to it. I'm hoping maybe this year will be the year. So I have this yarn that I purchased. This yarn I purchased in 2020 for this shawl. And it never got, I never got around to it. So I bought this in my dad's, at my dad's local yarn store in Grafton, Wisconsin and so yeah this is uh by Tiff Nealand um and I have this yarn which is 
the Manos del Uruguay, the Fino, which is 70% merino wool, 30% silk. It is a single ply fingering weight. I have porcelain as the main color, and then I have these minis um, for the rest of it because her pattern, there's two ways to knit it. I believe, you know, with the main color and then five minis and Three, four, yeah, five minis, or I think three different colors, like three full skeins. I think. I can't remember. All I know is that this should work, so I just want to get started. These are really pretty, so get this cast on at some point. This has been in stash for three years coming, so, well, Oct I think October would be three years, so I need to get this knit up. And I just threw it, since it's, since I bought this specifically for a kit, I just threw it in one of my wool warehouse organza bags. <sighs> Love wool warehouse if you have not used them. Uh, what else do I have? Guernsey, the Guernsey sweater. The Guernsey Genzer by Senna's Garn. I would like to knit that maybe, but I, I only put that on there because I'm not sure which type of Guernsey sweater I would like to knit, whether it is the... Guernsey Genzer by Sonnescarn or the Ingrid Sweater by Petite Knit. Um, I have another one by Pia Trans of 50 Fabulous Knits. It's the Specca, I believe it's pronounced. I could be completely wrong. I have the pattern though, but it's that. Or I have, I have this one as well. Absolutely gorgeous. This is the Pemberton Pullover by, by School by Blue Sky Fibers. The only issue with this one is that it's worked top or bottom up flat. It's beautiful though. And I have some yarn to start this one. So I bought the blue, I bought the yarn, um, wool stock worsted in that color because I love that oversized look. I know this is not enough. I only bought two skeins of this, but um, I figured, hey, just buy two skeins to start with, but then I realized this has worked flat, so I'm, I've am i never made a full sweater flat. My When I first started knitting um, back in the early 2000s, um, I did start a cardigan that was knit bottom up and it was flat, but I never finished it. And I don't know what the pattern was. Um, I don't know why I didn't finish it. Probably because I knew that it was going to be too small for me. I had that. I, I have that issue still that I knit things too small for myself. Um, so this is a possibility too. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, some type of Guernsey styled sweater I would like to knit this coming year. Just don't know which style. I have another one also here on here called I think it's Eurus. Um, it's by Agio Knits. Um, it is an all over cable sweater though, but it's knit from wrist to wrist. Um, so technically I would assume that's gonna be seamed on the sides as well. Um, I picked up some yarn. I use this to actually swatch for a bunch of different um, ones. And I think this one would work for that pattern. This is Fisherman's Wool by Lion Brand. This is 100% wool. You can buy this at Joann's, maybe Michael's. Um, Taylor, is it Taylor? Of uh, Hand Needle Wool, or Hands Needles Wool. Um, she talks a lot about this yarn. And so um, I thought I'd pick some up. I bought three skeins of this, so maybe for that sweater. Um, again, I did do a gauge swatch to test for I think for for the Guernsey Genzer and for this sweater the Eurus I think it's pronounced I think this would work better for the Eurus but again I don't remember I need to like take notes and stuff like that this is the oatmeal colorway by the way so that needs to get turned into something because I have, I have, I mean, I've only bought three skeins, but they're so big and I have no room on my shelves for it. So <laughs> it's sitting on top of my printer. 
Um, next is the Boho Style Mosaic Shawl by Arvine Wynn. So, um, I've been watching a lovely yarn on YouTube and she just recently finished this shawl before, it was before December. I don't know if it was before November, but it's a beautiful shawl. And I kept seeing it uh, occasionally in her Vlogmas videos and I really, really love it. I don't have yarn for it yet. Well, you know what? I take that back. I have yarn for it. I just have to dye it. So it's a DK weight mosaic shawl. Um, it's so beautiful. It has that Southwest type design, Aztec design, I think, just slightly to it. So I think I really would like to have it. I really want, I mean, it's kind of getting popular right now, the Aztec Southwest type shirts. Um, I can't find any sweater sweaters on Ravelry with that design that I love. Um, like an all over color work. Aztec or Southwest or whatever you want to call it um, design um, and I don't want to design it myself because that's a lot of work um, I keep finding like fancy like pullover fluffy ones like we went to Big R uh, which is kind of a ranch style store but they sell clothing as well um, they had some really pretty ones but I didn't want to pay the price for them so Trying to find something like that would be nice. If you have any ideas, let me know. But yeah, I have yarn. I just have to dye it. So what else? Um, the last one I have on my list. All right, the last one I have on my list. It's called The Slanting Slipover by Ann Vensel. Um, I really like this one and I've actually been spinning yarn for it. Um, I'm just unsure if my yarn will work. The first two skeins that I spun up, I left the first one on the shelf, but I brought the second one really uneven, like a lot of thick and thin to it. So I don't know if it'll work. My third skein, much more even. Um, I have some fiber left that I still need to spin up. So I'm hoping that I can make it pretty even to this. Um, this is a Corydale fiber that I bought from Busy Bee Fibers. A Corydale, and it looks like I got about a fingering weight. It might be closer to a sport weight um, spin on this one. Uh, this one, definitely a DK weight. And then the first one is probably, like, this is DK to fingering, definitely. The, uh, the first one's probably a <laughs> worsted all the way down to a fingering weight. It was not good. I was spinning it way too fast, just not paying any attention to what I was doing. Um, so again, like I said, I have some fiber left that I plan to spin up. Hopefully that'll be enough and this would work for that slip over because I, I think I'd really, really like that. Uh, it looks really nice and cozy. So I'm hoping that my hand spun will work for it. Uh, yeah, I think... Um, I have one spinning project on my wheel right now. Once that's finished, I'm going to go ahead and finish spinning up this fiber and then see how that works out. Who knows? But this has been my idea for this fiber since I realized that my first two skeins are not perfect. So or they don't, I'm not saying they're not perfect. They just don't match the skein. So... <laughs> the choice of being a new spinner right anyways so that was my last one on my list again I have a lot more that I can knit I have this kit that my dad and stepmom bought me last year for Christmas it's the Loma cowl this is all in uh Mena, Menos de la, Guer, la, 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 de la Uruguay and some Ella Ray mohair so there's this cowl kit that I have I have this, this one will probably get knit up, um, cause I, I bought this is the local yarn store day yarn for 2022 from my local yarn store, you and me. Um, this, I don't know if you can see it really well. It was really pretty. I didn't know what I wanted to knit with this. I mean, other than socks, but, uh, it dawned on me the other day to make the Cider House socks by Summerlee Designs with this. So I think that's what's going to happen. And then I have this kit 
This is by Pro Soho. Not a single. Not a single tag is the right way. <laughs> it's this shawl. Um, bought this kit, I think, earlier this year. This is the striped triangle garter wrap by Pro Soho, and the yarn is. Oh goodness, see, I wish. A good wool, which is 100% Andean Highland wool. It is, I think, DK. I think it's DK. It could be fingering. Um, I'm not sure. I got pink on, Hayfield, and heirloom white. So I got this color set. I just thought it was really pretty. So I have this shawl to knit at some point. I'm not gonna be able to get that shot right now. And I have this cowl. This is the Squid Games cowl by Forbidden Fiber Works. It's the eliminated cowl. It's available now on her website, Forbidden Fiber Co. You can buy this pattern. Um, so it looks like that. I think my daughter would really like to have this. So let's knit up at some point. I came with the yarn, the bag, and these amazing stitch markers. I really, really like those. So I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But I have this, like I have a lot of stuff I could knit, a lot of kits that I could knit. I also have this um, Sadar, uh, Sadar yarn by um, West Yorkshire Knitters. Is that really who it's from? It's a jewel spun. I wanna make hats with this, the, oh gosh. The hats are a free hat by Potter and Bloom. She says you can make two hats from this one skein. One ball of yarn. So there's that. I also have two skeins of Noro. Um, the Ito wool. This is for the shift cow. Uh, no. The shift. The shift. The shift. I think it's called. The, the shawl. So I have two of these that I'd like to get <laughs> working up. I have a whole bunch of other... Oh, and I have I have a ton of this to this is uh oh that tag Davina by Hobby. This is 65% alpaca, 25% polyamide, 10% wool. It's a chain blowed yarn. Um, and I have this, a lot of this in what's the colorway? Color 28. I think it's a sage color. Um, for a duster like cardigan, long cardigan by uh Knititude. So Again, I have a lot of stuff. Sorry. I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I really want to get it knit up this year, you know? Like, let's work on getting this out. It doesn't mean I'm not going to buy things, but I really want to knit things that I have. Like, stop buying patterns um, when I already have patterns. Like, that kind of thing. Oh, I should mention there is one sweater that is not available yet. I forget what it's called. It's currently in testing right now. Absolutely gorgeous sweater. I wanted to test it, but I did not, unfortunately, get the opportunity to test knit it. Um, it's coming out sometime in January, I believe. Um, so that will be going on the list. Um, and... I'm unsure if I'm going to actually take, you know, I don't know what color I want to do it in yet. If I'm going to do it in, so you need mohair for it. So I'm not sure if I want to do it. Sorry. Okay. I'm not sure if I want to do it in like a burgundy color and hold this with black. Um, or do it all black. Because the... Oh my gosh, I believe it's right here is see-through with just mohair. It's been a minute since I've seen the picture of the sweater. Um, I believe all of this from here up is just one strand of mohair. Um, so I'm debating if I want to hold this with black or this with black or maybe do gray. I would have to order some gray mohair though. I don't know. I don't know. 
I bought this for something else, but now I can't remember what. Oh, for the Pink Fizz by Andrew Mowry. Um, but I don't know what I'd hold it with. See, I'm not sure. So, but that, that other sweater that I'm talking about, um, that I'm going to show a picture. I'm going to find it and add it, but that is definitely going on the list for 2023. So, yeah. Okay. I know I rambled for quite some time. I got lots of yarn, lots of projects, lots of things, <laughs> and that will not be it. I know it. Um, considering this year, 2022, I've knit 30, I've finished 30 seven things. In my video I said 36, I believe. Um, and then of course I finished something <laughs> after I filmed that video. So yes. Um, yeah, there's going to be more than just these things. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let you go now because I know that I've just rambled and rambled. Um, I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you being here and seeing what I have been planning <laughs> to knit. Um, uh, and then stay tuned. Go ahead and subscribe um, if you want to follow along and see what I actually do this coming year, 2023. Um, yeah, so I will see you. Oh, I'm going to film my next update um, this coming Sunday. So what is that? July 1st. Yes, July 1st, the first podcast of 2023. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Bye. <laughs>